I never uh, have been aware of myself grinding my teeth during sleep, but I was told recently at the dentist. Welcome to the continuation of our series of breather shows on overtraining symptoms. It's been a little while. Hopefully you haven't been overtraining in the meanwhile, uh, but it's time to jump into a few more short segments where we cover certain aspects of overtraining, help you get a greater understanding of them, maybe get better at preventing or at least manage them early on rather than plunge into full-blown overtraining and related health symptoms. So the first one, two, three, four, five episodes in the series, just to remind you, the first one uh, covered topics like thirst, overheating, frequent urination, sodium, potassium imbalance. The second show covered cortisol, digestion, and menstruation overtraining symptoms. Third one covered twitchy muscles, skin problems, and sore throats. The fourth one was titled, Could Libido Be the Single Best Regulator of Training and the Stress Rest Balance in Training? The fifth one covered cardiac symptoms of overtraining. And now we're going to get into crash and burn patterns, insomnia, and grinding teeth as symptoms of overtraining. Uh, this is all inspired by the incredibly detailed content that you will find in the Primal Fitness Coach Certification Program. Learn more at primalhealthcoach.com slash Brad. And this fitness certification course is definitely the most comprehensive and broad reaching education for fitness professionals or fitness enthusiasts you will find anywhere uh, in the world uh, online online home study course where you can become a certified primal fitness expert uh, we worked on it for a long time i'm the course creator and the host of most all the videos uh, talk to a lot of the world's leading experts there's a tremendous uh, detailed written commentary that you will review and then be tested on. And so it's a really uh, rigorous and wonderful educational experience. We definitely help you every step of the way to make sure that you pass and get certified. And I strongly recommend it, but I wanted to highlight the course by sharing with you um, all, the, uh, all the commentary in the overtraining uh, chapter or module or just uh, highlights of it in any case. So we talked about all those symptoms I mentioned in the first five shows, and now we're going to talk about one of the um, one of the most important ones, one of the most <laughs> nearest and dearest to my heart anyway, and that is crash and burn patterns. Uh, these are characterized by energy highs and lows that affect your everyday life. For example, you might have excellent energy and performance during workouts thanks to stress hormones that have been released in response to uh, challenging your body to perform. However, after the stressor is over, uh, at some point, might take an hour, might take eight hours, 12, 24, even 36. After the stressor has subsided or the series of stressors, if you're talking about like a training binge when the high school uh, athlete goes off to running camp in the mountains and they run like crazy for two weeks straight. Um, and, and you get through it because the fight or flight response tries really hard valiantly to keep up with the stress that you are applying. But at some point, if the stress is beyond your capacity and continues, that's when everything falls apart and you crash and burn. So when that uh, stressor subsides, you will experience unusual and even develop debilitating fatigue. This might be uh, that afternoon after the, uh, the, the 6 a.m. morning workout that kind of pushed you over the edge. Um, so you'll start to progress toward this uh, state of full-blown burnout and overtraining with little symptoms here and there. One of them would be uh, significant difficulty waking up in the morning and you're dragging ass, you feel terrible, then you get some coffee in you, you get into your busy day and the stimulation of, let's say, the workplace, forget about workouts for a moment. And then later in the day, um, you get to the, uh, the running track or the venue, your peers are there, you get excited, you warm up, you feel good, the stress hormones start pumping, and you deliver a fantastic workout on the same day that you felt like uh, you got hit by a truck and couldn't get out of bed in the morning. Um, this happens uh, where 
uh, also with a um, a, a weekday uh, weekend pattern where you are working really hard, you're working long hours during the week, you're squeezing in workouts, you're getting up at 6 a.m., uh, pounding it out at the gym, heading off to a busy day at work, maybe not eating the most nutritious meals, maybe not getting optimal sleep, and then you hit the weekend and the uh, the stressor has subsided, so the stress response, the central nervous system, is allowed to take a breath and relax, and what happens is you feel exhausted for 12, 24, 48 hours straight because you're finally allowing your body to have some downtime and realize that this chronic overproduction of stress hormones has resulted in a, uh, a, a response of underproducing the baseline levels of the necessary hormones for you to, for example, wake up feeling alert and energized. Cortisol, you've heard a lot about that, uh, the preeminent stress hormone, and it is released in response to uh, stimulus. It could be uh, your turn to give a presentation in the conference room. It could be a challenging workout. It could be sticking it out for the last 15 minutes of workout when you feel pretty exhausted at, at the 30-minute mark. Um, but when you chronically call upon the stress result, stress response, and uh, chronically overproduce cortisol. When you start producing lower than normal amounts of cortisol, that's when you feel like a drag gas in the morning. Uh, we experience a desirable spike in cortisol in the morning to help us wake up feeling alert and energized and getting going. But when you abuse that during the day, that's when these symptoms kick in and you go into crash and burn. Um, the fragile state of being able to rise to the occasion between bomb outs is a clear indicator of overreaching and impending doom unless you take corrective action. So uh, monitor those uh, crash and burn periods rather than, for example, just measuring yourself by your best workouts and two days ago you felt great and so now it's the third day you should do it again. Not if you've had some troughs that are uh, abnormal in the meantime. Uh, here's another uh, symptom, insomnia. This is a classic symptom of an overly stressful lifestyle, suggesting chronic overproduction of stress hormones and sympathetic sympathetic nervous system dominance uh, over the parasympathetic nervous system, which ideally the sympathetic and parasympathetic work in harmonious balance throughout the day. Um, we should clarify a little bit here because you hear these words bantered about and um, someone is characterized as being uh, in sympathetic uh, like all day long whereby really um, every time you um, take a break, you have you know hormonal processes and uh, neurotransmitters are going ebb and flow throughout the day. So um, it's perfectly acceptable and desirable to be on for a little and then off and then on for a little. And you're overall in the big picture striving to achieve harmonious balance. So when you are sympathetic dominant or sympathetic excess, that's when it starts to become difficult to trigger parasympathetic function and allow yourself that uh, rest rejuvenation and restoration that happens when uh, parasympathetic is kicking in. And so insomnia, interesting how that kicks in when you are overstressed and about to become exhausted and burnt out. Um, so, you know, if you're not sleeping well or you wake up uh, alert and jumpy and jittery, uh, a half an hour before your typical wake up time, uh, don't <laughs> don't calculate that as wow, I must be full of extra energy today and feeling great and fully recovered. It could be the exact opposite that you are not catching up. You're not uh, absorbing and assimilating your training and your overall stress load well. Therefore, uh, you are um, you know still sympathetic dominant in periods of overnight sleep when you should be uh, parasympathetic and rest and uh, recovery restoration. Uh, grinding your teeth during sleep. This is another symptom of an overactive sympathetic nervous system. The body can't even calm down during sleep. And so you get um, these uh, muscles and uh, brain activation that is inappropriate, undesirable. Um, I never uh, have been aware of myself grinding my teeth during sleep, but I was told recently at the dentist, yeah, we're going to make you a, a bite guard so you don't grind your teeth during sleep. I'm like, I don't do that. Uh, well, as a matter of fact, it looks like you do because you got some wear patterns. 
<laughs> just like the uh, anthropologists finding the skeleton and uh, concluding that our ancestors ate meat uh, 750,000 years ago, um, present day, some dudes grind their teeth in their sleep, even though they think they're chill and getting a good night's sleep and all that. So uh, another one that's on this list are cravings. This includes increased desire for sugar, caffeine, or extra calories in general. This is also associated with sympathetic dominance, continuing to feed the beast that's running amok. In particular, for example, when we stay up late at night and we spike cortisol when it should be suppressed and that and melatonin should be released, but if we're uh, engaged in... Uh, a lot of artificial light and digital stimulation, uh, the cortisol kicks in and also prompts an increase in appetite in order to stay awake when we really should be sleeping. So when we really should be resting and feeling satiated, instead, we are going and looking for more calories, especially quick energy sugar calories, because we're kind of stuck. The, the needle is uh, tipped over in the direction of sympathetic dominance. Uh, that is a quick breather show so I could give you bite-sized uh, overviews of these topics and these symptoms, and we'll get to the next one in the next show, and I'll be the final one in the series. Uh, this is about having a second wind in the evening and experiencing mood disturbances. So hope you enjoyed that one. Watch out for these symptoms and hopefully process them differently or interpret them differently, uh, such as uh, waking up wide awake an hour before you usually do could be a pending sign of needing more rest, more downtime.